anybody hurt. They're making the situation worse by not letting everybody go. If they will let everybody go, we will move these cars, they can take the vehicle, and they can go. I wanted Kittle to be let go because he was the one I was communicating with and he was under the most pressure because the gun was in his head so it was very important to get him out because he was making the situation inside where the hostages were more hysterical because of his behavior. to a statement like that. There's no way you can respond to that when a, when a hostage feels like they're fixing to be killed and it's going to be your fault. Corlew, will you get back on and talk to me a minute? That's it. He's not talking. He's talked down. You just sort of have to feel your way through it. In this particular circumstances, I think probably being a woman might have helped me a little bit with Corley. Um, I don't know if it's because he'd been in prison or what. We're going to do what we can. We're going to do everything we can to resolve this situation without anybody getting hurt. Tell him to go ahead and let you out. Listen, Nancy, I'm going to come out. I'm coming out the passenger side of the door, and I'm going straight to the patrol car in front of it. If I More than an hour of negotiation, paramedic Tidwell was let go. According to procedure, the SWAT team had to secure him until they could verify that he was not one of the escaped prisoners. Before I left, they told me, if we let you leave, and they don't move those police cars and let us go, we're going to kill your partner. That was real hard to swallow. I mean, I really felt deep down that I knew they were not going to move those police cars. But there was nothing I could do about it. What is your name, Bill? You gonna lie to me? At that point, we didn't think that Corley would let the rest of the hostages go, so I was just trying to buy time for our SWAT team so that they could uh, devise a plan how they were going to rescue the hostages. I get everybody out safely. I told you that if you will let everybody out, we will move all the police cars and you'll be on your way. Do whatever you want to do. You don't lie to me. So if I let that man out, you're going to move. Don't Negotiations lie. began to get very tense. We expected them to kill a hostage, throw them out. The snipers were given a green light. They could shoot when they had a clear shot. We expected that when the shot was fired, that when one of the hostage takers was killed, the other would turn his head toward the rear or toward the front. And at that time, we would knock out the windows and shoot the second one. I don't feel, I know, I don't care whether- I finally reached the point where I told him that if he killed the hostages, that he knew that we, we would kill him. And that I didn't think that he wanted to die either. You don't want to kill yourself. You don't want to what I was doing is irritating him to some extent to keep him talking to me so that he wouldn't be uh, paying any attention to what was happening outside the ambulance. Well, that's the best you got right now, sweetheart. I mean, you know, I don't think you want to die. I don't think either one of y'all want to die. And there's no need of hurting any of those innocent people in there. We will let you drive away if you'll let all of them out. Most hostages that are killed are killed uh, statistically during a hostage rescue. If we had to shoot someone, we wanted to make sure that it was the 
hostage takers only. Why don't all of you come out, give up, and we can solve this situation right now? There's no need of we anybody We fully expected and were waiting and calming ourselves for a sniper shot. And we saw the paramedic reach under his arm and unlock the door. Are y'all so hell bent on getting killed? You don't want to get killed tonight. You don't want to kill yourself. When the paramedic jumped out the front, we were forced to initiate the tactical rescue. The side door was open and other SWAT officers jerked the driver out. And what we say? Sergeant Bishop pulled the nurse out. And then we went in and while Corley was struggling, we got him cuffed and the situation was over. Corley had held Nurse Bone hostage at gunpoint throughout the four-hour ordeal. Not a shot was fired, and all of the hostages were rescued unharmed. Corley and Driver were sent back to prison and given more than two life sentences for escape and aggravated kidnapping. It's a great relief when it worked out as well as it did. Vivian Bone, the nurse, grabbed me and hugged me and thanked me. It's real hard to tell you just the kind of fear that does go through a person. It's real hard to tell you the intensity in which you have to control yourself not to just scream. You have to draw on everything that you've got, everything that you know that's within you, just to cope with the stress at that time. I was amazed that uh, no one got shot in, in the uh, capture process. And I was amazed that I didn't get shot trying to escape. When Corley told Driver to, to go ahead and shoot me and throw me out, he was supposed to be counting to three and shooting. Uh, when he got to two, uh, I saw the SWAT team on the side of the unit. It felt like if I could get the door open and get kind of halfway out, then they would protect me. Negotiators in this incident really bought us a lot of time. We call them the mouth marines because they really uh, make it easier for the SWAT team. They get people to give up a lot of the time. I think overall that the, the police department did a very good job on this whole situation. Uh, our negotiating team worked real hard and, and worked real well together. I think our SWAT team did a tremendous job. It was their expertise that got these hostages out, so uh, most of the credit I have always said goes to them. I believe that we came so close to being killed that just to think about it sometimes is nerve-wracking. My most thankful part of it is that I'm alive, my partner's alive, the people that were innocent victims in it are still alive. Everybody's in custody, nobody's hurt. Next. I see the little girl run in front of the bus, and then I see him put his bus in gear. Then I knew that he didn't see her. 